Welcome back, ladies and gents, to the third installation of my devlog. And oh boy, have we made progress. But first, last time I lit the beacons of Gondor and asked you if you would name the newest member of my family. And you answered my call. Alright, enough of that, let's put a pop filter back on this mic and start this devlog. If you're new to the series, I'm making a zombie shooter base building typing game. I'm hoping to make typing a skill that's fun to be good at beyond writing essays. Let me walk you through what I did this time. My game was missing something drastically important. Physics. To make shooting enjoyable, a physical feedback was necessary. So I added knockback to the zombies when they get shot by applying the vector of the shooting angle onto the zombie game object. I did the same with the player character but in the opposite direction to create knockback recoil. Next, I really wanted to implement my fatty zombie, which would give me a good opportunity to start refactoring my code to make implementing new zombies easy. And that's what I did. This is when I realized refactoring my code was actually insanely satisfying. My zombie code went from being over 100 lines long down to 30 lines. Most of the methods in the basic zombie class got abstracted to the parent class, enemies, so that it may be inherited by my other enemy classes. I was even able to abstract some things to my targetable superclass, such as my z-layering method and several common attributes. And I now realize that some of them don't belong here because only the enemies have heads. Oh well, there will undoubtedly be another round of refactoring. In any case, Creating a fatty zombie class was a breeze thanks to this refactoring. Up to now, I had been creating def animations for each type of zombie, but that felt too limiting and not at all satisfying. We need more physics. As such, I made a new project and tried my hand at making a ragdoll. I did this by adding rigid bodies, box colliders, and hinge joints. I also made a ragdoll for another game that I started making with a buddy of mine as practice for the 48 hour McGill game jam that we will be attending in a couple days. You can definitely look forward to an update video on that in the future. I was happy to immediately find an interesting art style for this game as well. But my 2D ragdoll making skills still need some perfecting. These bloody hinge joints are like elastic bands and I'm losing my mind. I digress. I came back to my typing game and gave my fatty zombie the necessary components to make them ragdolls and only enabled them once they got shot and died. Now instead of applying the knockback force to the full body, I applied it only to the head, making the ragdoll body follow along and giving it a much more realistic headshot feel. But I still needed to start bringing this game to the next level, so I looked into Unity's particle system to make the heads explode. I messed around with it until I got this and some interestingly gory bugs. And more bugs. I finally settled on this. It made a lot more sense for the blood explosion to stay stationary. I applied the same ragdoll mechanics to the other zombies and exploded a hundred heads for the fun of it. As you do. Next, I attempted to create a tileable grass sprite. I was about to call it a temporary sprite and just go with it, but with only several days to go before the game jam, learning to make good tileable sprites would probably be a good skill to learn since I'm the only graphic designer of the team. And so, I made this, then went through several color iterations using gradients and settled on this. It's safe to say that this is leagues better than the first attempt. I might actually make a tutorial on how to make these tileable sprites if people are interested since I didn't find any good tutorials myself for doing it on Illustrator. I then messed around with uh, adding uh, post-processing effects to the camera, which gave me plenty of ideas for visual effects when taking damage or getting power-ups. For now, I settled on a vignette effect set to a pinkish tinge. I chose pink to make it complementary with my grass tile so that the result would be dark without being black, and I'm very satisfied with the vibe I've created and the purple darkness along the sides. I took a break and came to watch my new companions. Then Pepito started speaking to me. Pepito has been looking at this graph and not understanding. 
so many watching but have not subscribed. But Peter doesn't need this added stress in his life. I I don't know what I, I don't know what that's about, but in all seriousness, thanks a lot for the extremely supportive comments. It really does mean a lot that you guys enjoy this. If you want to keep up to date with the game and my journey through making this game, hit the subscribe button and leave a like. I'll see you next time.